everyone. It's a real pleasure to have you watch my prominent works carried out from August 1st to September 8, 2020 in the world of sports. My name is David Oku, sports journalist from Nigeria, working with Flo FM 94.9 Umuahia, Abia State. Hello everyone, my name is Samuel Chikozi, Super Eagles and Glory for Hi Samuel, welcome to Flare FM TV. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, and you? I'm okay, I'm fine. What's your more like for you? It's a small villa where I grew up from and it's a beautiful city. Yeah, people say, ah, it's not beautiful, it's not nice, nothing is here, but for me, everything is here. Because <laughs> I don't like anything. When I'm here, I just feel at home. I don't fear anything or anybody. On which streets did you run and play football in Umuaya? In Uba. It's not a street, it's a community where we play ball and it's a small field in the community. How's that experience on the street saved you, having gotten to where you are now? It's a good experience because it shows in the street football, you know, you need to fight, you need to be stubborn, to show every aggressive that you want to win and you don't want to be on the set of losing and everything. So it motivated me a lot even when I was growing up and being at this top. When you made the jump, were you thinking, this is how I am going to make a living or rather I am good at this? I didn't really think of making a living out of it. Because when I was growing up, I didn't think they used to play football or something. I just think uh, it's just normal stuff people play and their country. Uh, give them their honor. Even though my mom stopped and said, Someone you need to stop. I focus on stuff. I just say, Mommy, this is what I just love doing. I used to watch uh, JJ Okocha and Kamu You know, when they were playing. I have a dream one day when I was playing alongside JJ Okocha, you know, with a small mindset. But I didn't know they were retired so quick, so mm -hmm. that was it. How old were you when you started out at Future Hope Academy? And on joining New Generation and Diamond Academy, tell us some of your experiences uh, there. I joined Future Hope when I was 18. I was playing under 18 that time because I was so good in the under 18. They said, I think this boy is so good to play with these guys. And I joined the senior team. I've traveled with them to play matches and competitions before I changed to New Generation. And I was playing with new generation before Diamond picked me up. Talking about competitions, were you always looking forward to local age grade competitions? I know about Nsirimo and World Football competition. Which ones were you involved in? I was in youth form and grassroots competition. In, they played in Abo Hill, Abba, in Omar House, played in so many youth competitions. But in youth form is the one I traveled to Kogi State to play and I went to Aspire in Lagos. Which footballing star did you look up to the most while you were growing up? When I was growing up, I love every Nigerian player. Let me just be sincere because I wasn't looking up to anybody or anything. If JJ or Kanwanko wasn't playing, I don't like watching the game. Your playing style has been compared to Iron Robin. Did you look back at some of his clips? Yeah, I watched some of his clips. And anytime I'm going to play a game or, or anything, maybe in my free time, I used to watch some of his clips to see what he's doing and so I think. It's a perfect example for me. Uh, he, he has done so many things with his left foot. Have you heard you say to yourself, at 11, 12, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi said, I want to be the best and had a clear idea of where they were going to. Was it the same with you? Yeah, almost the same thing. Because when I one day on the summit World Cup with Nigeria, I said, I give myself, uh, in the next five years, I want to win the African best. The, but I need to start from the professional competition and playing the Africa Cup of Nations, I think I have achieved two and we remain the African best. I think in the next two, three years, I think I can reach there. Who was the first person that said to you, son, you're good? It was uh, Tony Adele. He was my coach in, in Diamond Football Academy. Some of the things I've been doing in the field, he was the one that taught me to cut in and shoot. 
That's why I don't call him coach, I call him daddy. Because he's just like a father to me. When did you move from enjoying yourself to a more structured training regime? Having at the back of your mind that you were on the road to becoming a professional player. That was when I was <laughs> when I went to Villarreal, the under 18. I was enjoying myself, I wasn't putting any pressure on myself. Then from there I joined the team B because everything happened within a year. Then the national team invited me, then I know I'm entering into a serious team, it's not a joke anymore. Those that develop quicker physically very often struggle a bit more mentally. But in your case, you had an understanding of the game. No, so it's just something you know how to do. You don't need to be tired or maybe you're going to affect your brain or your thinking. I just put my head forward and said, this is my work and this is my talent. You've played with players who are older than you and sometimes you have to use your brain to solve problems. Some of these players, because you cannot match up with them physically, they often regard you with a little bit of suspicion. How have you been able to handle that? <laughs> It's football. You know, everybody has blood inside of them. Any movement you do inside of you, you need to be thinking quick. When you have the ball, you need to think quick. You need to do so many things easy. Maybe if you know you cannot go through pass, then you come down and play with your team. Because every defender has so many mindsets. It doesn't matter whether you are young or everybody, they can dribble anybody. And you can do any, so many things within a second with the ball. Returning from the Under-17 World Cup, and now you are on another level. Does that not frighten you? It doesn't frighten me. It shows that I'm growing up. And it shows that I've been working hard from the under 17. Sometimes I've dribbled six people, scored like six goals in a match, a friendly game in under 17. Mala Amneko will tell me someone who don't know how to play football. <laughs> I know he's just saying that so that he will motivate, so that he'll do more. But for me, as a young boy, when you could tell you that he, he wear you down, he, he makes you as if you're not doing anything. But when I started understanding, I know uh, he's pushing me to do more. But he taught me so many things. He pushed me a lot. He told me how to, when to dribble and when to pass. He, was one of, he put a lot of things to my sources. The Under-17 was a special World Cup for you. You won the competition, was named most valuable player. and. I imagine a lot of positive memories from that tournament. Yeah, <laughs> before the World Cup, I have an injury. For six months, I was using clutches. I came back home here. They called me back to come and join. But when I went back, I wasn't training. I was because my leg was depending me, and they were treating it gradually. I still another two months without not training. They're making it eight months. I didn't touch football. Almost when they want to travel to Tor. In Argentina, that was when I started jogging in Nigeria a little bit, training small, small and small. Then I caught up my breathing more. <laughs> then I traveled with them to Argentina, and I think that was how I started playing. I didn't play their first game in friendly tour, only the last game I played that I scored. Then they made the list, and I was surprised I was on the list to the World Cup on a 70. If you notice, the first game um, against uh, US, I, didn't, I was on the bench. I entered the second half for 80 minutes. I only played 10 minutes. Then the second the second game was the one I started against Chile, the hosting coach. There I scored the fastest goal in the competition and made three penalties and scored two goals. You were named DFA Most Influential Player of the Year and MCL Most Valuable Player of the Year in 2017. In 2016, I beg your pardon, individual accolades are something of pride for players. Is it something you consciously work towards to? I don't work towards it. Anytime I'm playing, I just want to enjoy myself. The first thing you need to do is just enjoy yourself. Then every other thing will come along. If your mindset is you want to win an award, that means it's not going to come. You're going to be a selfish player or anything. Maybe your team won't accept it. But when you first enjoy yourself and play with the team, then every other thing will come along. That's the most important thing. But all the award I've won, I didn't think I'm going to win the award. I just play my football. If it comes, it comes naturally. It was only a matter of when rather than if you made the push to the senior national team. How was that feeling for you? And when was your first training session with the Super Eagles? <laughs> I didn't believe my name because when they were looking for my number, so I was asking them, why are they looking for my number? Because I was still in Team B. I just played the European matches with the first team. I was surprised. Everybody was calling me to congratulate. I was so shy. I first called my mom. Everybody was happy. I couldn't believe it because I didn't dream of playing for Super Eagles. 
that moment. It just happened so quick and I was so happy. Okay, in camp, who was alongside you to put you through? And how important was that for you? I came out, I was looking at everybody, everybody was. The only person that put me through was Vito Osimi. He was he's my best friend. We started from under 17 months. So he was the one that told me, hey, you need to calm down, don't be nervous, because when I came out, I was scared, you know. When you are seeing all those big names, uh, they're watching on TV, they went to World Cup together, and you watch them on the World Cup. When I see them, I'll just be looking at them. If you tell me, keep focused, don't don't do as if you don't know that you also a big name. I say, yeah, I know, but I need to just look them because I'll be watching Ahmed Musa and Kelechi Hanasho. So he told me, hey, you need to just keep focus and do what you can work for. So the first senior team goal came at the AFCON 2019. What do you remember about Egypt? Do you have anecdotes about it? I don't remember scoring that goal. But I didn't know I was going with my right leg. <laughs> <laughs> against South Africa? Yeah, against mm. South Africa. I didn't know I was going with my right leg. And that game, I didn't know I would start. I thought maybe I would start from the bench as normal from in, against Cameroon also. But I was surprised when I had my name on the first list. So I said, okay. Nothing, nothing serious about it. Let me go and enjoy my first, myself first. I didn't come out and going to score a goal. I just said, okay, I want to go and enjoy myself. Then, my God, I have it. He just, and it's my right leg. That, you know, it's my walking stick, so. <laughs> mm. So it just happened. I, I think uh, they're very nice people. Although they supported us against South Africa, because South Africa, won their country, I think. That's why they supported us the most. It's a very good atmosphere there yeah, and it's a good it's a good thing to be in Egypt to experience that kind of atmosphere. You know Nigerians there did well in Zamalek and Emmanuel Amike, I think it's a king there. Yeah. When he came around everybody was present. I think it's a very good experience also. Victor Shimon is your best friend in the national team at club level. Who has been your best friend all this while? At club level. Um, Paul in my club. Yeah. He's Paul, Paul Torres. Going back to when you were enjoying football, all of a sudden things became very serious. Was there a single moment, a single game or preseason when you had it in your mind, you were thinking you were going to be a professional? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't think about anything, but somewhere going to be a professional player. I just want to be playing football. But at first, I'm there. I wasn't in any any pressure to be on the first team, to be in any serious competition. I just want to enjoy myself. That was my first priority. Igbo delicacies, cultural festivals, dance, your friends, families, your sister. Sometimes football takes us away from all of those things. For you, how have you been able to handle it being away from all those things? That's why I say growing up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you are growing up, so many things will leave your head and being the firstborn in the family, you need to focus because so many people are looking up to you. So that's why I just keep my head up. Even if they are missing me, I just tell them, hey, it's cool, don't worry. I focus on my football. That's the most important thing. For now. Can you remember the first time you put on a VRL jersey? What did you think? <sighs> well, the first time I put on a VRL jersey, I was so happy. Because it was a dream come true to play for any club in Europe. And when I wore the jersey, there was a little pressure. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little pressure, but I was happy also. But that day, when I wore the jersey to enter the field, I played a very fantastic game that day, I think. I did a very wonderful debut on that jersey. I did like three assists. And I won number 10 that day. <laughs> <laughs> so they were so happy and I was happy for myself. When was your first mentioning in a newspaper? And did you save it? Uh, that was when I went to Eba, Eba Cup in Portugal. And I went to tournament. I won the highest goal scorer, 12 goals. That was when I saw my but I didn't save it. That was the first time I, I saw my name in this video. Do you cry easily? Yeah, maybe when I'm losing a game. Mm. Uh, it's normal thing. Uh, when I won a, a tough game, like in a semi-finals, I think I normally cry. Like in Under-17 Nations Cup, 
I cried when we lost in our semi-finals. And uh, another one I cried was against Mexico in our semi-finals and World Cup. We won for two, but it was a tough game. <laughs> that was our two games and now I've cried. Talking about similarities, what do you share with your lovely sister? What do you have in common? I think we have everything in common. Um, I think he's the closest person for me. Because with cheese, we talk sometimes. He called me on phone, she called me and said, ah, Bro, I'm missing you, I want you to come back. <laughs> I don't tell that, no, you know, it's not possible. We just cheese, talk, he told me so many things, and we have fun together. Now I came back, he was the one that was doing every live video. Even if I said I'm not doing, he would force me to come and put my head in the live video. So, I think he's crazy like me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, talking about the ball now, do you talk to the ball? I don't talk to anybody. Like, come on, I want you to do this for me, ball. Do you talk to it? I don't talk to anybody. I just hold my ball. It happens. Anytime you have the ball in here, I don't talk to anything. I just hold my ball. I play my football. When you hold the ball, what are you always dreaming of? You always think fast. If you don't think fast, they're gonna close you up to pass or to dribble or to make runs or to give an assist. That's the most important thing. But for me, I know if you give me the ball, me I have two options: to dribble you or to pass. Can you imagine yourself staying in one place, or you would like to try different adventures? For sure. As a young player, you need to try so many adventures. You need to win trophies sometimes also. It's a dream for me to change that. For sure, in the future, no. I'm going to try so many adventures. Venus Williams said you have to believe in yourself, even if no one else believes in you. It is apparent you have pushed yourself from where you were to a certain position. Though you've had some advice or help from coaches and players along the way, which of those advice do you best remember? The only advice I remember is Amunike. Say believe in yourself and believe in what you are doing. And I think that's what I'll be keeping because you need to believe in yourself first. It doesn't matter if other people believe in you. But if you believe in yourself and believe in what you are doing, I think you'll be at the top level. Who are your references? Check. I have so many references. I have so many references. Should I call some? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, some names would be nice to hear. <laughs> like in Nigeria? Yeah, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And a little bit outside Nigeria. Okay. I think uh, Santi Kazula and Kanwanko. People I've met. Talking about people I've met that have talked to me so many times and Emmanuel Amunike. Talking about Kazola, why do you call him crack? <laughs> yeah, that is a Spanish uh, uh, language. You know, when you call someone crack, it means the person is the best. It's, it's very, very good. He can do so many things. So fantastic. Because playing alongside with him, I learned so many things. He can use his body leg to do so many things. What do you think is your best position? as you continue your growth in football? My number one wing, right wing. Oh, I can play eight. I can play 11 also. Finally, let's talk about some of your works off the field. Some of the charitable jobs you've done, philanthropic works, just to help in the growth of community football. For me, I don't like saying what I've done about outside the field. If we don't have foundation, even when my foundation does, uh, like in the COVID-19 cases and everything, they don't do so many things. But I, for me, I don't like mentioning it. I just like keeping it to myself. Visited so many places in the COVID-19, pay for the hospital bill. But it's just something I just keep for myself. It's me and my God. But the foundation, they tell me, you need to put it on your social media so that people know you are doing things. But I tell them, it doesn't matter. It's between me and my God. But I know they are working. They are doing a very nice job. They are helping people. They are trying their best also. 
Okay, Samuel, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you also.